Hey everybody, Rhino here, the world's strongest pro bodybuilder. And I'm back for another appearance here on Mark Bell's Power Project. So I had a viewer complain that they didn't appreciate me pimping my cooler while they were watching my free video. So I'm not gonna talk about this one of a kind patented cooler today. I won't mention that it holds a gallon of ice water. And I certainly won't talk about the fact that it holds two shaker bottles inside so you can keep your pre and post workout drinks all together inside one ice cold container and whatever you do do not go to the cooler.com that's cooler with a k do not go there and purchase a cooler because it could ruin your free viewing experience okay now that we got that out of the way it's time to talk about one of the most necessary and most effective performance enhancers ever known to mankind and nope, it's not creatine. Creatine's a joke. If you're eating egg whites, tilapia, and broccoli, then you might get a little temporary bump from creatine. But if that's your diet, you're not really an athlete anyhow. So why bother taking creatine? Real athletes don't waste their time with creatine. They just grill up some steaks and call it a day. The much maligned micronutrient that I believe is the most critical and effective performance enhancer for athletes is sodium. Optimal sodium intake increases blood volume, which helps deliver more oxygen and nutrients to the cells, which helps repair and remove waste. Sodium helps increase stamina and endurance, and it allows athletes to hold more water in the muscles, which increases strength and explosiveness, and it helps improve the integrity of the joints. If you listen to my rants, you might already suspect I have a story to share with you about my personal experience with sodium, and you'd be right. Three years ago, I became the first power lifter in history to total over 2,300 pounds raw in competition weighing under 275 pounds. Truth be told, that record almost never happened. Behind the scenes, I was in so much pain from cramping that I asked my wife to take me to the hospital. At weigh-ins the day before, I had a rather easy weight cut from 290 pounds to 275 but I made a couple huge rookie mistakes that really cost me. First, I didn't take in enough sodium for my refeed, and I didn't gain all my weight back. I was only 282 pounds the morning of the meet, eight pounds less than I was 48 hours prior. And second, for some unexplained reason, I got to the meet early and I sat there and drank about a half gallon of Gatorade in the warm-up area. Now to be fair, this was the original Gatorade. It's high in sugar and low in sodium. Well, sugar stimulates the kidneys to release water, so what inevitably happened during warm-ups is I started to have to pee every 10 minutes. Along with the hot weather in Sacramento that day, I was sweating a lot and I started to feel a bit drained during squat warm-ups. I had squatted 9.05 in training, but 8.65 on the platform felt really heavy, so I started cramping really bad. I went on to miss an 8.81 attempt and then things took a turn for the worse. Trying to warm up for bench press, my lower back was locking up so bad I had to have it massaged between every set. Then my hands started to lock up so bad from forearm cramps, I was literally prying my fingers open and resting them against a bar or they would curl up into a fist. Now I was drinking water but I was still having to pee every five minutes until one time on the way back from the bathroom, my quads and hamstrings started to lock up so where I couldn't walk upright and I started hobbling and had to lean on the equipment just to stand. That's when I told my wife to get the keys and take me to the hospital. Instead, she told Mark Bell and Jesse Burdick, and they immediately started loading me up with salt tablets. They put close to 2,000 milligrams of flavored sodium tablets in a liter or two of water, and I started drinking. Now within about 20 minutes, I was able to slowly resume my bench warm up. Now it's still tight, but it wasn't debilitating. I hit something like a 570 opener, and then I missed a 600 bench on my second. Now fortunately I came back and I got it on my third, but I left myself needing a PR deadlift to reach the 2300 total. Now I was able to eat about another 2000 milligrams of sodium and water along with a meal, and I was able to rest for an hour before warming up for deads. Now after all that sodium and water and food and rest, my deadlift warmups were insane. I pulled 700 like it was the bar and I hit a 799 on the platform with ease. 
I finished with an all-time PR pole of 837 pounds to clinch the record and a new all-time total of 2,303 pounds. The sad thing is there's nothing unusual about cramping ruining an athlete's performance. Some people may remember the scorching hot weather and the effect it had on the CrossFit championships last year. Athletes were dropping like flies. And how about LeBron James cramping up during last year's playoffs? It happens at the highest levels, and it shouldn't. It's preventable. Sodium intake should be as carefully monitored as proteins, fats, and carbs. Now, I've been dieting and doing weight cuts all my life, since wrestling as a teenager, and throughout my bodybuilding and powerlifting career. And the effects of sodium and water on the body are enormous. Since that meet, I've had the opportunity to work closely with one of the UFC's best nutritionists and weight cut experts, George Lockhart. Now he's worked with many of the top fighters such as John Jones, Rory McDonald, and recently helped Cyborg win her first UFC fight. I've helped with weight cuts for, with professional MMA fighters and some of the greatest powerlifters in the world such as Eric Lillybridge, Dan Green, Amit Sapir, and Brandon Lilly. And the single most important thing I focus on is sodium. Everything else follows sodium and nothing is as important for performance. But you might ask, isn't sodium unhealthy? Absolutely not. It's quite the contrary. Three of the largest studies ever done on sodium intake all showed that an increase in salt results in a decrease in cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. As a matter of fact, the highest rates of all-cause mortality were found in the groups that restricted sodium intake. Now there is a small percentage of the population that's sodium sensitive. Just like there are those that are lactose intolerant or have peanut allergies or gluten allergies. But the research suggests it's a small percentage that will have adverse effects from increasing their sodium intake. And those athletes should monitor the effect of sodium on their health. Now when you initially increase your salt intake, you will realize some water retention until your body acclimates to the increased salt intake. But it will normalize and you'll begin to see all the benefits. Now what kind of sodium should you be eating? Well, table salt is sodium chloride, so it's only about 40% sodium. And you'll get a bigger bang for your buck if you use sea salt. But don't overlook iodized table salt. Iodine is another largely misunderstood and maligned nutrient which has important health benefits. Two billion people worldwide suffer from iodine deficiency, which causes mental retardation, and it also causes goiter and thyroid disease. Now iodine was added to table salt to reduce the incidence of goiter, which is his enlarged thyroid gland. Thyroid disease results in a slowed metabolism, weight gain, fatigue, and other symptoms of hypothyroidism. So before you start popping T3 like candy, consider that you may benefit from the use of iodized salt. Now how much sodium should you take in? Well, I live in Las Vegas, and I train hard and I sweat a lot, so I salt all of my meals. I also eat a couple pieces of bacon with breakfast, I added a flavored salt tablet to every glass of water that I drink, and I snack on pickles or I eat one with meals. I try to take in 10 to 12 grams of sodium a day. Yes, that's 10,000 to 12,000 milligrams. Now I believe athletes should take in about 4 grams for every half gallon of water that they drink. 8 grams for a gallon, 12 grams for a gallon and a half. Now disciplined athletes, or those who are dieting, tend not to eat fast foods or processed foods, so they're already limiting their sodium intake. Adding to that, they drink a lot of water, which also tends to further dehydrate them by flushing out valuable minerals and electrolytes, so their performance suffers. Now oftentimes athletes will reduce or eliminate carbs for a period of time. Water binds to carbs in the muscle. So when there's fewer carbs, there's less water. And there's an increased likelihood of cramping and decrease in performance. Now adequate sodium intake can solve all of these problems and drastically improve performance, decrease fatigue, and increase blood volume for better recovery. This is especially true for women who are preparing for shows and trying to lose weight. Don't restrict sodium. It doesn't affect body composition. If your trainer has you cutting out sodium, a week before a show, you need to kick him in the throat. The muscles will deflate and pull away from the skin. In addition to being tired as hell, you'll lose definition and you'll look skinny fat. 
Then you'll suffer from water retention after the show and blow up like a balloon and have sore feet and enormous cankles. That's where your calves and ankles are the same size, cankles. And if you deplete carbs and salt for a week to fit into your favorite bikini, you're just losing water, not fat, and it'll all come back. Now, I've even seen this at the highest levels of competition. A couple years ago, Flex Wheeler and I were working with the Mr. Olympia caliber bodybuilder. And two weeks before his show, he was exhausted and his physique was flat and he looked terrible and we couldn't figure it out because the diet we gave him called for 10 grams of sodium a day. And he swore he was sticking to the diet. After a couple days of this, we had to sit him down and find out what was going on. And as it turns out, his wife admitted she had pulled all of his sodium from his meals because she thought she knew his body. Needless to say, he was pissed. Fast forward 24 hours and 20 grams of sodium later, and he looked and felt amazing. He was full, vascular, and striated. It just goes to show you, it can happen to the very best. Fear of sodium is just another one of those pervasive myths that never seems to die. John F. Kennedy said the following, which I believe holds true for so many things in our industry. The great enemy of truth is very often not the lie, deliberate, contrived, and dishonest. But the myth, persistent, persuasive, and unrealistic. Too often we hold fast to the cliches of our forebears. We subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations. We enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. Well, I hope that gives you something to think about because that's my rant. And as always, thanks for listening.